Imagine this, you are about to start writing your thesis or some other report. You have your subject matter, let's say optical flow. What now? In the worst case scenario, you don't even know the topic that well. You have some catching up to do. But where can you start? You try to Google it and find some website. You start reading and then you ask yourself, can I trust this information? Is this accurate? Well, this video we will be answering these questions and more. Academic papers and books are the primary source of information we will be looking at. Websites, blog posts and videos can also do as good starting points. So let's get cracking. We must find this material and organize it as a first step towards getting a good grip on the topic of our thesis or report. First, we must find the material and we can divide this into two parts. Think about it. Before trying to find something, we must know what it is we are looking for. We need names. I mean, we need the titles and authors of relevant papers, theses or books. Perhaps the best starting point is some paper or thesis your supervisor got you to get things started. Go to the reference section and knock yourself out. If it is a good paper or thesis, it will contain a treasure trove of relevant material. Add it to your reading list. Ok, you did this but you are still not satisfied with the material you found. Or perhaps you are not lucky enough to have such a good head start. Anyway, there are many awesome resources that will help you out for sure. We focus on free services, but there are paid options often made available by your university. Your school's library probably offers courses on how to use those resources. Look it up. Perhaps the best place to start our quest for material is Google Scholar. You probably know it already. Just type in the name of your topic and there you go. If your results don't seem relevant, it is a good idea to make your search more precise using the appropriate search operators. For example, if we include a search term in quotation marks, Google will perform the exact match search. Uppercase OR and N will work like logical operators. The minus sign will exclude a term or search phrase. This is often very useful when there is a topic that uses a similar terminology and we want to exclude it. A quick Google search will get you a complete list of the available search operators. There is also an advanced search option where you can search for a specific author, journal or publication year. You can also click on related papers on the search result and find, guess what, what Google thinks are the most relevant and related papers to that one. This is a bit of a hit and miss, but it is sometimes very helpful. So, You've been searching on Google Scholar and you find a paper that seems interesting. How can you gauge if you're looking at a relevant paper? A rough way to understand how influential a paper is, is to look at the number of citations. The higher, the better. However, keep in mind that this is not the end-all, be-all. Perhaps a more accurate approach is to take a look at the abstract and decide for yourself. After deciding that the paper is relevant, save the citation in your preferred reference management software such as Zotero or Jabref. You can also save papers in your Google Scholar account, but to be honest, I like the first two options more, as they will make it easier to later use the references you've collected in the document you are writing. There are, however, alternatives to Google Scholar. Semantic Scholar is one of them. It is also a search engine for scientific papers. In my view, the main advantages over Google Scholar are two. First, it is much easier to understand how influential a paper is. Semantic Scholar uses machine learning to classify citations into different types, with the most relevant being highly influential citations. These are citations to which the paper provided a major contribution. Second, it is also much easier to check out the references of the paper as they are neatly listed on the paper's Semantic Scholar page. One can also save papers in a personal account and check out related articles. Next up is the website Connected Papers. This is an incredible tool to find more leads from a good paper and plug in the gaps in your reference material. You input the paper's title and you get a nifty graph connecting it to other documents about the same topic. It provides a great visual representation of the trends and popular works in the field you are interested in. The larger the bubble, the more influential the paper is. You can even check the prior works view to find important ancestor works in your field of interest or use the derivative works view to find literature reviews of the area and recently published state-of-the-art that follow your input paper. You can batch download all the papers and load them directly into your reference management software. It is a great tool. 
Finally, we have Wikipedia. Calm down, hear me out. As weird as it sounds, Wikipedia can be a great resource if your topic is mainstream enough to get a page. Even if this is not the case, the pages of related and more mainstream topics can be very handy. First, the articles are often good enough for you to get the gist of the matter, and second, the references are often pure gold. This has happened to me several times. Now we get to the second part of finding the reference material. How do you get your hands on the actual papers and books? Some papers are free to access and you can easily access the PDF of the article from the download link in your Google Scholar or Semantic Scholar results. It is also probably a good idea to connect to your school's VPN. This will give you access to more papers. They can, for the most part, be accessed precisely as if you had a free access to them. The links will appear in your Google Scholar or Semantic Scholar results. Now, regarding books, Open Library can be an excellent resource for you to borrow books. If the title you are looking for is available, take advantage of that. Also, Google Books often has large sections of some books available for you to use. Check it out. Finally, these last two are a bit more controversial. They are legally questionable, but there shouldn't be any problem as a user. If you feel comfortable using them, the first resource is iHub. You just type in the doi of the paper, which you can easily find on the publisher's page for the article, and you have it. It is very rare for a paper to not be available there. It mostly happens when the paper is really, really recent. The second resource is Library Z. It is like SciHub, but for books of all kinds, including scientific and technical texts. You just type in the title and the author, and most times you find what you are looking for. Ok, so now you know how to properly collect all the material you could want and more. However, if you do not organize it, you will not reap the most from your effort. There are a ton of tools for exactly this purpose. The first tool we are going to take a look at is Calibre. It is a fantastic tool to organize ebooks. It is also cross-platform and open source. It allows you to create virtual libraries and display them in a very pleasing and practical way. You can quickly find the book you are looking for using its title, author or even user-defined tags. You can also convert between different document formats such as PDF, EPUB or DGVU. This is more of a long-term tool to organize your books. Now, for reference management tools, take a look at Zotero or Jabref. Zotero is a free, easy-to-use reference management tool. With it, you can easily collect and organize your material into different libraries, folders and subfolders to your heart's content. It also makes citing and sharing your reference with your peers much easier. Jabref is an excellent alternative to Zotero and supports most of the same features. I hope these resources help you find all the material you need to write your thesis. Take care!